What's up, everybody? Welcome to the U.S. Mexico border. We're on Interstate 10, and we're heading west. You can literally see Mexico from here. You can see on the left, all those lights are actually Mexico. Now, yes. what's crazy is that we already saw a truck that was pulled over, and it had a huge, giant bale on the back. Nakasaki! So Interstate 10 goes right along the U.S.-Mexico border here. I, I can literally see Mexico. Every, all the lights on the left, uh, you can't really see as well on the, on, the, on the phone. But to the left of me, I can look out the window, I can see Mexico. You can literally, like the whole drive, you can make out the border because there's lights along the border on the other side. So, But like I said, it's crazy because a little bit ago, we saw a pickup truck, brand new pickup truck. And uh, there's a police car parked behind it with the lights on. And the back of the truck was a giant bale sticking out. Um, that was kind of an interesting thing to see. Also seen, uh, there's like uh, these giant sheds where they're pulling over semi-trucks. So, you know, U.S.-Mexico border is an active area. So there's all types of things going on. Uh, so let's see. Uh, and it is Thanksgiving, right? Perfect time for a family reunion. So let's see if we see anything of interest tonight. We'll see if there's anything. The lights that you see ahead are the city of uh, El Paso and Ciudad Juarez. Ciudad Juarez is the fourth most dangerous city in the world right now. Um, and it used to be the number one a few years back, but uh, there's a few other cities that took over. But El Paso is said to be a pretty quiet town. We'll find out. See if we see anything interesting going on. Other than a few vehicles, there's a lot of vehicles just pulled over by the side of the road. We've seen semi trucks pulled over by the side of the road. We've seen police cars a lot. And like I said, we saw that one car that had that bail on the back. So it looks like stuff does happen out here. Excitement. Interstate 10 is uh, parallels the Mexican border, very close to the border here. <clears throat> And I'll have the camera rolling because you just never know what you're going to see out here. It could be nothing. It could be something. Speed limit's 80 miles an hour, but we're going 71, so the camera doesn't shake too much. So, so you guys can get a good video. We're actually going to drive slower than what the speed limit is by about 9 miles an hour. Okay, what's the elevation out here? Elevation is <coughs> 37.46. Okay, so almost 4,000 feet elevation start to feel uh, a little bit out of breath at some of these higher elevations. Temperature's 45 degrees. And it is Thanksgiving Day. I do with that. There we go. But we'll see if there's anything interesting going on along the border. And again, to the south of us is Mexico, and in front of us is El Paso. I have to wear chapstick. Chapstick. <laughs> Anytime it's like in the 40s or under, my lips start splitting. For no reason. You did this off camera too. <laughs> I am like done with it. Yeah, anytime I talk, he's gonna start doing his bebop. Yeah, Donnie from the Waldorfers. Slow down to 75. I'm going 71, so we're good. Okay, El Paso, El Paso County Line. Yeah, buddy. El Paso. I'm guessing the food in this town Which is finished like for the, Yeah, it's gotta be good food. Uh, El Paso Spanish for the passage. La familia cruzando. I've always wondered if those family crossing signs were real. You ever seen those signs that were like people crossing? I wonder if those signs are real or fake. Anyone can make a sign out of anything, so. We'll see if it's real. Huh? I think they're fake, but we'll find out. You can see Mexico on the other side. Mm -hmm. 
I think what's neat about uh, El Paso and um, and Juarez, I think the lights in Mexico are yellow, and the lights on this side are white. So like, if you're looking at the city, like on the border, you can tell a different. I think I'm not sure. I saw one photo on that that was like that. I'll find out. I want to see this thing in the daytime. See what it's like. Yeah. No, that'd be an interesting town. And our hotel is right on the border. So what I'm thinking is we should take a delay to check out we can. And then we'll, we'll head back towards Tucson really late at night. You know, we might be able to take that service appointment. I used to like the wild thorns. Not sure why. Thorn berries. Whatever the crap they were, I used to like them. Kid would be like, <laughs> the girl, well, her name was, uh, the guy's name was Eliza. Nigel. Eliza, Nigel. But they weren't on all the time, right? They were only on like during certain times. Yeah. I used to, what, they used to explore or something, right? I don't remember what the theme was. Yeah, they, they were. They like, had a, a Range Rover, right? They had a Kami, which is like an RV. They also had a Land Rover. And they would go like exploring, mm -hmm. and the the kid was adopted, right? Yeah, they adopted the little. They adopted Donnie. Beep, 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 beep. I like Debbie. Debbie was Debbie interesting. was interesting. She had braces, right? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Typical teenager. Yeah. And then Nigel was the guy. Was there somebody else? His wife. You remember the name? Mary. Oh, you remember the name? What was the theme of that show? Do you remember what the theme, general theme was? Yeah, they were, um, they would film nature document, animal documentaries. Right up my alley. And That's my first, would, YouTube, my first YouTube channel yeah. was about pigeons. They would travel around the world filming different animals. Yeah. And then they had the monkey that lived with them. Yeah. It wasn't a monkey kid, it was a human that was adopted. No. There was both. There's a monkey. Darwin, the monkey. Okay. And then the little boy Donnie that they adopted. I'm gonna guess that the like yellow lights are Mexico, right? I'm gonna guess if the lights are white, they're in USA. And if they're yellow, they're Mexico. I think in Mexico they have yellow lights instead of white. Like he, red, yellow. Yeah, he was wild and then he was adopted by the Thornberries. Yeah, I think we've gotten a layer of that smudge off of all the window cleaning I've been doing. Mm -hmm. I think the windshield's kind of cleaned up a whole lot. If I remember, there was a cross movie with the Rugrats, and even the babies couldn't understand it. Tornillo. Yeah. Even the Rugrats couldn't understand it. I remember there was one episode of the origin of Donnie. Do you remember that? They found him in the jungle or something? Or what happened to him before they found him. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, 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 I think I watched it. It's been so many years. Yeah, it's been a really long time. What I really used to like about that about them was like the colors. I, I, I distinctly remember the colors that they used for the cartoon. I remember there was whites and light blues and like greens. Like what I remember about those cartoons yeah. is the animation and the colors that they used for the animation. Yeah. And how cool they were dressed and how cool their vehicles were. Yeah. It was a piece of marketing really. Yeah. There's a semi truck park there. I think it's a rest of it. Passing tornillo, which is Spanish for screw. Will we see something interesting or not?
only thing I can tell is like you get the sparks. Yeah. The only thing I can tell is that there's like different colors. See the like police lights in Mexico? Look at all the police lights over there. Look at all the police lights. There's something definitely going on over there. That's a lot of police lights. You can see the green lights from the border. Yeah. There's like a, there's definitely a scene unfolding over there. Yeah. All types of right along the border. It's like green lights, blue lights, red lights, cops. Green lights are border patrol. So you can definitely see like right just south of us right now there's something yeah. unfolding over there. Big scene. I'm talking like they got like a lot going on over there. That's so cool dude. Can you imagine how cool it would be to live here and just watch this scenario on photo right now? That would probably not be as good as <laughs> So it would just be like, awesome just to sit outside and watch people carry book bags full of Que cosa mas bonita, amigo, Diego, pasa, toma tu café, amigo. Are you sure it'd be that friendly? Probably not. Yeah. But look over there, that's like a massive scene. Look at how many police yeah. cars and stuff. How many resources are just being used. El Paso. Al paso que vamos, te la paso. Piensa en mí, llora por mí. No enciendas el radio, por favor. Piensa en mí, llora por mí. Sure, we get an hour. Yeah, we're in mount time now. Wow. My, oh, look at the view from up here. This is so cool. Dude, yeah. We got, awesome. So cool. Yeah, you know me, I'm not going to sing romantic music for too long. No. <laughs> it's like, that was a very short-lived. me, you're not me. Go to get that! I don't know where it's like, yeah! Yeah. Would Kaliki Taka be in English? Um, it's like a stanky leg. There's, there's no real... I mean, it sounds like... But, but it's not exactly but. Dude, this is so cool. You can see, like, I'm gonna guess everything on that side's Mexico for sure because the lights look different. Interesting. Bing sang me. Bulikita, it, it, it's, it's not a real word. It, it sounds like but. But then taka, what would. But caca, maybe? I'm not sure. Like, it, it doesn't really like have any specific. And people play it for their kids. I mean, and it's funny is that all of the kids in my family that are younger love that song. And it's already outdated, but they think it's interesting. It doesn't sound like it's not vulgar, but it's not clean either. It's 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 it's, it's a gray area of it's not a real word. It sounds like pop your butt back, but it doesn't exactly. It's not exactly that either. It, it's a fictitious word. And other artists have made songs about it, and they've like 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 uh, like Chacal made a song. By the way, my friend's friends. With, my friend is friend with Chacal. He does his promotion. And that's pretty cool. I don't know who Chacal is. Uh, pa pa la cámara. The song is pa la cámara. You've heard his music for sure. He's the one that has a Cuban version of Puri Guitar. Okay. The one's like Puri Guitar. Oh that yeah. That one, yeah. So. Uh, the group that sings that song is a Dominican group, and the group is called um, Toño Rosario. 
turns out that Doño Rosario sued them or something, I think, for copyright infringement because it sounds like my song. Yeah, there's definitely a copyright infringement issue with that one. In the sense that, hello, you know, it's the guy's, you know. Oh no, Hermano Rosario, I think is the name of the group that sang it. Regardless, it's a Dominican group. And it's a merengue song. And uh, I'm not going to say it's a hit one day one. The guy's got other songs, other guy's got other songs. Yeah, you'll see cars like on the side of the road all the time up here. But now you're, you gotta come up that hill though to get up here, don't you? It seems like a very impractical place to do that. I think you're further from the border. Are you close to the border here or are you still far from it? Are you right along the border? The border's like a mile or A mile? Or so. so yeah. Yeah, it would make sense. You would have to climb up a hill, but hey. Maybe it's two miles. There's a, a trailer by the side of the road. That's kind of interesting. I'm almost in my trailer. There's definitely interesting scenarios, questionable scenarios. Bien sang me, not up on me. Bien sang me, think about me. Kiss me, don't kiss him. Bien sang me, llora por me, cry for me. Look at the view from up here. Wow. Unbelievable. This is incredible. What a view. Oh my. This is incredible, dude. And yeah, it's 46 degrees outside. But I put my window down just so I can see. Look at all the lights. Those, you I'm gonna can't guess, see without opening your I'm window. Gonna, oh, I got window. Look at all those lights right there. Yeah. What are those like? Is this like cops like flashing on the border? Interesting. So where can you tell the difference between Zaguares and... I see a bunch of yellow lights going that way. Which one's which? Like which one's without Juarez and which is El Paso? This is incredible. Being We're seen, not there yet. How far are we? We're like 20 minutes away. Yeah, yeah, you'll definitely get some good views from up here. Once we enter East El Paso, we'll see a bunch of shopping malls on the right.
you look up Marco Antonio Solis' greatest songs, <coughs> or Los Bukis, because if you tell me the name of the song, I'll probably know the lyrics. I want to sing some Spanish. I'm going to sing it more today. Nuevo Mexico. I will be a cord of tea. I will be a cord of tea. Do it, mentiras. You tell me that all the time. What's that? You lie? Yeah. A donde vas? A donde vas? That's a beautiful song. I'll have to listen to it tonight. Como fui enamorarme. Como fui enamorarme. Excepto mi derrota. Excepto mi derrota. Now that guy can sing, bro. Marco Antonio Solis. Chiquita Bonita. Chiquita Bonita. Wow, my mom used to love that song. Chiquita Bonita. I, I can't remember how it goes with that. We're gonna listen to some of that stuff tonight. Okay. In the, in the big tub. If the hotel room's got a shower, we're listening to that. So, Chiquita Monita, that was one of my mom's favorite songs. My mom was a super fan of Los Buki, Los Temerario, eh, Marco Antonio Solis, Juan Sebastian. Those are some of our fourth. My mom basically, a bronco, oh my gosh, a group bronco. My mom was like super fan of bronco. We used to have a van. My mom loved to road trip. And we would go road tripping, let's say, from Kentucky to Florida or to Tennessee. And we were, back then it was all cassettes. You go know? down to 60, it looks like. 60 up ahead? Yeah. Back then it was all cassettes, you know? Yeah, it's 60 now. It's uh, all cassettes and whatnot. Welcome to El Paso. Anyways, uh, she had uh, cassettes and she had, you know, back then it was hard to find cassettes too in Kentucky, go figure. Finding Mexican music in Kentucky, go figure, in the 90s, hard. But she had Los Buki, Los Temerario, uh, Joan Sebastian. Then when CDs came around, we got the 2001 uh, Dodge Caravan, Town and Country. You guys ever have a Town and Country? You had a 2001 van? Yeah, my dad had a green to town and country. Oh. And when we got that. And it was a new van? For us. <laughs> and for us, it was new. Uh, this was in Florida already, though. Yeah. In Florida, it wasn't in Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, in Florida, we had. My mom loved this minivan. I mean, my mom loved to travel, so for her to have this thing. Yeah. That had a CD player. And when that CD player, I remember we had a. a What's this? Uh, Aventura. It was, uh, I mean, Bachata was starting to become popular back then. So we had Aventura. Um, Munchi Alexandro was huge. And, uh, and I had a little flip. <laughs> and they're all listening like, Te quiero mucho. And I'm like, yep, no flip. Like a pimp. I could not listen to rap. My mom caught me listening to rap. Hands down, was gonna be in. Are you delinquent? <laughs> I'm not kidding you. That's probably why I, I always had a fascination with it because I, I wasn't allowed to do it. Yeah. I'm sure if I was allowed to do it, it would have been like a passing phase or something. But when your parents that tell you, some things. when your parents tell you you can't do something, then you want to do it. Yeah. Right or wrong? Yeah. When I was like really young, my mom told me not to listen to Marilyn Manson and when I became rebellious as a teenager what do you think I listened to? Yeah. Yeah. Well I remember the first time I ever heard rap music it was in Louisville, Kentucky it was 1998 yeah. we were in a house on the south side 
and I was flipping through the rate. My sister had a big boom box. Mm -hmm. Remember the big boom box that took eight batteries? Oh gosh, yeah. Yeah, it was a Sony too. All the way was crap, but back then that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, you know, like on the other side, they have like roadblocks and like 50 trucks beating it out in the middle yeah. of the highway at night, right? Yeah. It's insane. Like, remember that? Okay, you remember that video I showed you of like 50 trucks blocking the road? And it was like a full on. Yeah. That was on, over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It goes it goes down there. So. Mm -hmm. Welcome to East El Paso. See the shopping center right there? Ross. That looks like a really Oh, yeah. Nice and there's a brand new Marriott there. That's where we should have stayed, actually. I feel kind of dumb driving us to downtown when we could have stayed over here. But, anyways. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens tomorrow. It was a big boom box. Mm -hmm. Okay. I had never heard rap music in my life. It was 1998, and I was and I was going to the radio stations, and all of a sudden, Big Pun comes on and, and Biggie, you know. And the first time I heard it, isn't this weird? Nobody told me it was bad because, crap, I'm, I'm what eight years old, right? Seven, eight years old years old nobody told me this was bad I put I'm sipping through the radio stations and here's like big pun or like big or something right and the moment I heard it I was two things went to my mind one is I absolutely am intrigued by this and two I knew it was bad like the moment I heard it, I knew it was bad. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Like the moment I heard this music, it was, I'm pretty sure it sounded like maybe Sunshine or like Big Pun or Big Ear. It's just one of those big fat rappers. You can tell the guy was fat because his voice was thinking. Your Big Ear, Fat Joe or Big Pun, one of those guys. Yeah, Fat Joe is a little young. I don't know, but the moment I heard it, Katie, like, the moment I heard it, I knew it was bad, and I knew, I even remember tweaking down the volume a little bit, because I knew if my parents heard it, they wouldn't like it, which is weird, because at eight years old, I knew when I heard it, that it was bad, yeah. and I knew, to like, I was like, oh, crap, my parents are going to hear me, you know, like, and I had never listened to rap before, like, I, I didn't know what it was. Yeah. But I knew at that moment that if my parents heard me listen to this, they would be mad about it. It was so weird. Like, I just knew it was bad. And, um, but I was listening to this, you know, one was like a bluegrass station. It's Kentucky, go figure. Yeah. Bluegrass, rock, no, no, the big pun biggie. Yeah. You know, and it was just captivating. It was 98.5. I even remember this. I think it was 98.5. Weird memory, very precise, but it was that, yeah, for sure. I remember the radio it was on. It was a, it's a very profound memory because that was the first time I heard that music and it just captivated me. And the moment I heard it, I knew it was bad. What did you do when you wanted to listen to it? Well, the thing was, my sister, before all that, right? Yeah, as soon as we arrived in Louisville, yeah. <laughs> we hadn't even moved out of the projects. Yeah. And my sister had... Oh, we were eating, like, soda... I don't know if I told you we were eating soda yeah. crackers for, like, a month. Yeah. The first two weeks I was in, in the United States... Yeah. All we ate was Sprite and soda crackers. That's it. That. And I, it wasn't weird to me because we came from Cuba, so... I was used to, like, pretty much not eating nothing. You know, it's weird, but... Yeah. I'm gonna guess everything down there is Mexico, right? Uh, yeah. The well, you know, the hotel, the hotel we're gonna stay at has got a really good view. Yeah. So we'll be able to look over there really good. No, the border is still back. It's further little, back? Yeah, it's further back than you think it is. Oh, but how many miles do you think that is over there? That's not close. Yeah, you can see it. It's not close. <coughs> Well, my sister, we were eating soda crackers and Sprite. That's all we had to eat. And when we came to the United States, they gave us soda crackers and Sprites. 
I said, I remember distinctly, like, the first thing my sister probably bought would have been, like, a TLC CD or something. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. So TLC? My, TLC. Uh, all the pop music from back in the day, remember? Yeah. Okay, so you're talking the TLCs on Thanksgiving. What? <laughs> that place is open right there, the pink place. Oh. Well, these people don't have family. <laughs> no, that's what happens. Yeah. yeah. I'm just playing. But listen, um, so how far away from the hotel? Like 15 minutes. Here's a Toyota dealership right here. I remember she had like 98 degrees was out back then, right? Yeah. 98 degrees, TLC, the Spice Girls. Yes. Oh my. I was not allowed to listen to the Spice Girls. You weren't Girls. allowed to listen to it? Yeah. Right. Really? You've met my mom. Okay. I, I, yeah. So there was a Spice Girls, TLC, 98 degrees. So my sister had all those CDs. Yeah. And in Louisville, Keep in mind, Louisville's like a long, a strong African American influence, right? Yeah. So there was other little groups that were mostly black females, um, but saying kind of, yeah, along those like pop, but it was a pop of a little bit of a, a, yeah. of a, it was already starting to throw a little bit of hip hop and R&B into it. You know what I mean? Like, like shifting into the, you know, you know what I mean? Like, when it was pop, it was starting to shift. And keep in mind, Louisville, yeah, she was working in in Louisville. So I'm sure her co-workers were probably listening to a lot of R and B because remember she worked in an air when, when they worked at the at the Louisville Ladder or something that yeah. it was on Aga Queen. Mm -hmm. So her co-workers would have mostly probably been African American. Yeah. And they were probably the ones that were putting on her on all that music. Yep. Um But I had access to all that, like right off the bat. Yeah. But back then, if you went to any party, it was undoubt look at the view from here. Unbelievable. It was undoubtedly merengue. It was just a, if you went to a party, it was merengue. No matter what. And to this day, yeah. a lot of Spanish parties are still just merengue. Yeah. No doubt about that. <laughs> what an amazing city. Yeah, like, I you, wasn't you can, allowed to listen to that. Like, when I was, like, when it first came out. Because, like, the lyrics... Of Spice Girls? Yeah. And here's the funny thing. I don't remember the music at all. Mm -hmm. What I do remember is the album covers. Mm -hmm. You know, like, they would be, like, wearing, like, purple pants or something. Purple leggings. Yeah. You know, like, purple. They would be, like, wearing purple leggings and high heels or something. Yeah. But I was allowed to listen to, um, <coughs> Britney Spears. Really?
probably the only one. We hit some. Plus, I think uh, one of my mommy, one of my mom's like, I think my mom was like in a mommy group or something like that at like the church or at their church, mm -hmm. and they were talking about it. And my mom was like, "Oh, you're never watching." Oh, no, we couldn't watch it. There's no doubt about yeah. it. We could not watch that. They were like, "Here's no chance for watching that." Yeah. I remember, like, I had Pokemon cards because it was the biggest thing when I was going to kids that age back then. Yeah. And my, um, it was a huge fight because I wouldn't get rid of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you can't see this right now. Yeah. You see those towers on top of the mountains? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the view in the daytime here? Yeah, this has got to be amazing. This has got to be amazing in the daytime. You know what's weird is how Texas this feels. Yeah. <laughs> Taco Cabana. How far away from our expo or whatever? Five miles. We're about less than ten minutes. Wow. You know what? It still feels like Houston. It still feels yeah. like uh, like uh, San Antonio. Yeah. It still has like a very Texas feel. Yeah. And, and it's far from the rest of Texas. Let me tell you. Mm -hmm. This is definitely far from the rest of Texas. They have that constant. They have an Alabama. <laughs> and I think they have it in Florida. The what? What's that? Some kind of furniture, home store, or something like that. Okay. They have like furniture and stuff. Taco Tone. Wow, the view only gets better. Look at yeah. this. Wow. Unbelievable. This is a treat. Gosh. You kidding me? I am so excited. Wow. And you're looking at two countries. I just don't know where the line is. I mean, somewhere down there. It's... Yeah. yeah. Take off the. Wow, you're looking at two countries. I, just, I really don't know where yeah. the line is. But I know you're looking at two countries. Here. Yeah. Well, That's, this is America. Yeah, everything on this side is USA. Is there a star on the mountain over there? Yes. I'm going to guess Mexico's the only thing down there. Because yeah. it looks like the lights are more tightly packed. Mm -hmm. Dude, this is incredible. I didn't realize this city was so freaking cool. Yeah. I mean, this is like, wow. It's like Birmingham, but like way better. Yeah. It's I, I thought Birmingham was a nice night drive city. Yeah. This leaves Birmingham behind by a mile. Ten miles. Yeah, this is definitely like wow. Yeah. It also looks very clean and orderly. It does. Look at that star inside that mountain. Yeah. sure that's a true statement. I just don't know which one. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that's a true statement. So much probably jumping through here. <laughs> that is just, wow. That view from up there, it's like yeah. great little ride. Okay, our exit is coming up pretty soon. <sighs> Get sick, me. That'll be more amazing in the daytime. I am so excited. I think this town might be worth spending some time on. Yeah. Look at the star on the side of that mountain. That oh, is so cool. so cool. This is just... Um... And, okay, so I know I know this for sure. There's a star on this side of the mountain, but on the on the Mexican side... In two miles, take exit 19B to our downtown convention yeah. center. On the Mexican the side, I think it says, Jesus loves you in English or Spanish. Where's the... Uh, two miles, is it? Right? Yeah, it's gonna be on the right. What's the name of the exit? Or what is it? Downtown what? Convention Center. Okay. Is there a name of the street or exit number? Uh, 19B. <coughs> I think there's a, a sign on the other side that says either, I think it's either in Spanish or, or English. It says Jesus loves you. I'm, I'm not sure if it's in English or Spanish. Okay. I think there's an English sign on the, on the Mexican side. Oh, cool. Something like that. We'll, we'll probably, we'll figure it out. I think it's here. But to think that this is one of the safest cities in America. What? This is considered one of the safest cities in America. Really? Yeah. El Paso? Yeah, it is. Just like Hialeah. Most most Hispanic cities actually have some pretty low murder rates and all that, all that stuff. It's like pretty low. Okay. I think the, the, what's high here might be the property crime might be high. Yeah. Wow, dude, 
this is more incredible than uh this is hands down more incredible than, than Birmingham. Yeah. Absolutely but incredible. On that side over there? Half a mile, baby. On that side over there? Huh? On the Mexican mile. side? Take yeah. us at 19B toward downtown convention center, tourist information museums. This car won't move. Downtown Missouri Avenue. Right here? Yeah. On the other side, me. right? You have a city that until a few years ago was the most dangerous city in the whole world. You know? degrees be comfortable for a midnight walk to the desert fancy cars okay yeah you said it folks tank their poop down tank Super impressed. I, I I thought this would be like kind of like a rundown. Use the left two lanes to turn left onto North Mesa Street. Uh, I, I had no real realistically like favorable expectations for this place. Mm -hmm. I thought it was kind of like Laredo is kind of rundown. Yeah. I thought it'd be like a Laredo basically. It's, mm -hmm. It definitely looks better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you read my mind. It's, I thought it would be like a Laredo, you know, like kind of rundown. And, so we have to use valet service. I don't know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a valet service place. Okay, that's yeah, hotel is a sensor. Gonna be valet. Yeah. So we're gonna have to get everything out of the car and don't forget anything because then you have to feet, pay them to go get the car. You don't want to do that. This will be our first fancy hotel on this trip. Yeah. Okay, that town does look safe to walk. I thought it would be terrifying to walk through here. I can definitely look how many people are out and about. Wow! Yeah, right you could probably Avenue, live stream. Then slide left onto South El Paso. I look safe enough to live stream. There's that many people out and about. I hear people screaming and having fun, bro. Like this is gonna be great. I thought it would be scary to walk around here at night. This looks great. Mm -hmm. Wow, this looks a lot better than I imagined. There's like people just skateboarding and. Mm -hmm. Why do people? It's, I think it's like people like they 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 purposely, what's the right term? Demonize. Well, this is blocked. You can't go in there. And there's like food trucks and stuff yeah. out. This looks a little sketchier here. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I envisioned. Yeah. Okay. So there's old, there's people in the shadows and stuff. Where are we going? This is not talking to me. I don't know what's going on here. How is it not talking? You were supposed to turn down. I don't know, but right they, well, they they blocked it. Head southeast on North Mesa Street toward East San Antonio Avenue, then turn right onto East San Antonio Avenue. Okay. Turn it's right onto East San Antonio to Avenue. Is that a one way going this way? No. Uh -huh. In 600 feet, turn right onto South El Paso Street. Why isn't it talking to me, sir? What am I doing? It is talking to me. No, so I'm looking at the map. It's not even telling me where to go. Okay. So this is the parking. I mean, we already have a restoration. Can we just drive in the parking garage and it'll take me down? Or do we have to use valet service? Can we use the valet? Turn right onto South El Paso Street. Then your destination will be on the left. Okay, so. 
There's the hotel. Does it have LA or does it not? I'm have pretty LA? sure it's gonna have LA parking because it's yeah. it's kind of fancy and expensive and all that. I mean that that's a hotel, right? That's the entrance of the hotel. No, that's the entrance right here. Oh. They're definitely gonna have LA. You could probably park it yourself. I don't know. We'll find out. Mm -hmm. um, Your destination is on the left. I'm so tired. I need to use the bathroom or anything. We could probably go up to the room and then get the stuff later. Dude, this looks very safe. Look how many people are out and about. Oh, wow. And it's not... It's not... It's it's not even a Friday or Saturday. It's just a it's normal... It's Thursday. It's a Thursday. Yeah. Valet right there. Yeah. Okay, we'll use the valet service. Let's get our, our crap. We have a reservation. <sighs> but yeah, make sure you don't forget anything. Like, oh, yeah. And like, normally, like, if we forget stuff, we have to come back three or four times. Mm, There's no coming back three no. or four times here. Yeah, I know. 